is the hell and paradise are there how as a common person i believe i don't believe in any religion well as the question that how do i know that hell and heaven how will a common man believe i don't believe in a religion brother what is the definition of religion religion what is, is the religion okay how you lead your life many people say that i don't mind i'm just a human being i'm born i will do test and error and i will know how to lead a life for example you go to a forest you are going to a forest the first time you don't know whether the fruits are poisonous or not if you start eating any fruit you may end up eating a fruit which is poisonous and you may die what do you do you ask an expert right or wrong when you get sick who do you go to brother when you are sick who do you go to the doctor the doctor is an expert in medicine sickness correct Or you treat, can't yeah. say I am a human being. I will treat myself. No, that's what the Quran says in Surah Nahl. The Quran Sorry, says in Surah Nahl, chapter sixteen, verse forty-three, and Surah Ambiya, chapter twenty-one, verse number seven. Fas alu ahl zikri in kuntu la talamun. If you don't know, ask the person who's expert. Similarly, to lead a life, we have to ask the expert. Now, who is the expert? Who is the expert? The person who created us. Who created us? it's almighty god so we have to follow the commandment of almighty god if you do not believe in almighty god you should listen to my video cassette is the quran god's word where i have proved logically and scientifically the existence of allah subhanahu wa taala if you are an atheist are you an atheist brother are you an atheist pardon me are you an atheist no no not an atheist so what do you do you believe in god actually i believe in the power but give me the power that means you believe in god <laughs> so you I want to call it power you want to call it supernatural you believe in god it's like i believe something something you don't is... know the name that name is god <laughs> you may call it power you may call it anything <laughs> something exactly people get if you don't believe in god then you listen to my cassette the cassette names. is the quran god's word if you don't know who that power is yet you listen to my cassette is the quran god's word where i have proven scientifically Undoubtedly, existence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the Quran is the word of Almighty God. Now, coming to your question, if you say about power, that means you believe in a religion. Because religion, by definition, according to Oxford Dictionary, religion means a belief in a supernatural controlling power. Power word is there. That means you believe in a religion. Religion, according to Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a supernatural controlling power, a personal god or gods. that deserve obedience and worship that means yes. you believe in religion you don't know the definition of religion so i think you talk about organized religion. religion religion is english word brother religion is english word if you open the oxford dictionary it says religion means a belief in a superhuman controlling power and you believe in a power or a personal god or god that deserve worship or obedience to know more about that power you see my video cuz it is the quran god's word now coming to your question basic question how will i prove that there is hell and heaven now if you hear yes. my video cassette i've proved many scientific aspects in the quran if you use science to the quran what we come to know that whatever the quran has said today 80% can be proved to be 100% correct scientifically quran speaks about various scientific facts which we came to know recently it speaks about astronomy it speaks about the spherical nature of the earth it speaks about the big bang it speaks about the light of the moon is not its own light reflected light it speaks about the water cycle it speaks about biology it speaks about botany it speaks about zoology it speaks about embryology all these things now today is the age of science and technology if we put this test of science to the quran what we come to know 80% whatever the quran has said is 100% perfectly correct the balance 20% is ambiguous neither right neither wrong mm. out of the 20% not even 0.01% has been proved to be wrong by scientific fact it is ambiguous so what my logic says when 80% is 100% correct and not even 0.01% of the 20% is proved wrong so my logic says that inshallah even that 20% will be correct it's a logical belief I have been a medical doctor, Quran, speak about astronomy, embryology, genetics, everything perfect. Then you ask me, brother, you being a doctor, you believe in hell? You believe in heaven? You believe in jinn? You believe in life after death? 
So my logic says, inshallah, even the other 20% in the Quran, which science hasn't reached up to that level. Science cannot prove it. Maybe science will prove 50 years later or 10 years later. But today science hasn't reached that level. So in this way, I believe whatever 20% which science hasn't proved to be right or wrong, inshallah, even that will be right. This is one way to prove about hell and heaven. There's another way, simple okay. way, without reading Quran. Brother, I'm asking a simple question. Is robbing good or bad? Robbing is good or bad? Robbing is bad. Bad? Yeah. Raping a girl is good or bad? No, 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 bad. Bad. Okay, now, I'm asking you a question. Logically, I suppose happen to be the biggest mafia. Hypothetically. I'm a big robber. You prove to me logically and scientifically. I'm a very logical person. I'm a scientific person. I am a logical person and scientific person. You prove to me why robbing is bad for me and I will stop robbing. Only Proof one reason why? you give me. One good reason why robbing is bad for me and I will stop robbing. It hurts others. It hurts people. It hurts others. What difference does it make to me? If it hurts, if I rob, if I rob a thousand real, it is benefiting me. I can see movie. I can go to a five-star hotel. What difference does it make whether it hurts others? Does it hurt me? I told you, prove to me why it is bad for me, not for others. I am least bothered about the others. That's a really why good point. Why is it bad point. for me? When I'm robbing, why is it bad for me? Him, no problem. How do you what prove it? What difference does it make to me? <laughs> if it hurts somebody else, does it make a difference to me? I can enjoy, I can see movie. I can eat chicken biryani. I asked you, give me one logical reason why it is bad for me. Not why it good is bad question. for Good question. I like that. I am a big mafia. I am powerful. I am a scientific person, logical person. Prove to me one good reason, logical, why robbing is bad, I will stop robbing. Come on. Another try, brother. Another try. One more try. Why it is bad? No answer. No answer. Try, try. There are 20, 30 reasons, 100 reasons you can give. You know, actually, as you said, the religion means the way of life. Not religion. Why robbing is bad? Tell me. Don't go to religion. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to the point. No, not point. First tell me why robbing is bad. We'll come back to your point afterwards. I'll come to your point afterwards. When that yes. is the way of life. Not way of life. Tell me why robbing is bad according to you. Why it is bad for me. Uh, I will he sticks to the focus. Me, you know, it hurts like, don't others. So but what stay on the point. Does it make to me when it hurts others? Does it hurt me? <laughs> of course, you know. Why once... it is bad for me? Not why it is bad for others. Once we come to the society, you know, we have to face, face them. Okay, once we come to society, you have to face them. I'm facing them. I'm facing them. What is what? Why it is bad for me? The society won't respect us. What difference does it make whether respect or not? I can eat chicken biryani. I can go and see a movie. I can go to a five-star <laughs> hotel. What difference mm -hmm. does it make to me if society respects or not? Imagine someone respects society. The poor person doesn't have food to eat. He'll be happy? No. You require food to eat or not? You require food to survive? Only society respect in the person is starving to death. You know, in India, thousands of people are starving to death. What difference does it make? I must give me one good reason why robbing is bad. I stop robbing. Why it is bad for me? Can anyone else help him out? Why robbing is bad? Why robbing is bad? There are various answers. I'll help you out. You may say, Police will catch you. Good logical reason. Police will come and catch you. Correct? Right or wrong? Correct. Ah, but you didn't give the... I'm helping you out. <laughs> but brother, I told you I'm a powerful mafia. The police is in my pocket. Ministers are in my pocket. Big mafia. Pay off the police. See, all the top mafia, the they can't touch the pocket, me. On my payroll. Why is it bad? The police is on my payroll. What will they catch me? Small robber like you should not rob. You will get arrested. I'm a top mafia. The police is on my payroll, even the ministers are on my payroll, they are in my pocket. So small robber like you should not rob, big mafia like me can rob. Another reason, I'll help you out. Maybe somebody will come and rob you. Yes. No one can rob me because I've got 100 bodyguards. All of them hiding behind the stage. Bodyguards. Small robber robs, somebody will rob him. No one can rob me because I've got bodyguards. Hundreds of bodyguards with AK-47. Hmm. So logically, you cannot prove at all why robbing is bad. With all your 
science and technology you cannot prove robbing is bad so shall i take it in that way you know it is to make people fear that you know if you do wrong things then when you die what wrong thing where is robbing wrong for to prove it is wrong na where is robbing wrong you haven't proved to me robbing is wrong when you prove robbing is wrong then you can say don't do wrong thing na therefore what is good what is right you require a creator to tell you Yeah, I need a basis. You, you can't just make up what's right what or wrong. What's good, the what foundation? Hmm. This fruit is poisonous. This is healthy for you. Apple is healthy for you. Wild berries are poisonous for you. A doctor tells you. There's no better doctor than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Logically speaking, logically speaking, brother, that mafia has got bodyguards. No one can harm him. And believe me, there are many examples. He dies a very comfortable death. But I am asking a simple question now, brother. Don't you think that there should be justice, brother? Yes. Justice. Someone should punish him or not? The law is there, but the law cannot punish every human being here, boy. There are many mafias in Italy. There are many underworld people in India. And the law can't do anything to them. The law is in their pocket. But yet, you as a common man, don't you think you should be punished? Raping is good or bad? There are many people who rape. They rape the girls. No, nothing. The law cannot catch them. So don't you think he should be punished? Yes or no? Yes. But there are many people you see in this world who are big mafias. They die comfortable. They are rich. They are millionaires. There should be some justice. The reply is given by the Creator, Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number eighty-five. Allah says, "Kullu nafsin zaykatul maut." Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. This life is just mere chattels of deception. If there is no life after death, this life is of injustice. What we say that the total justice would be on the day of judgment. Our Creator, Almighty God, will give justice. I tell the person, fine, you may be a big robber. For example, you are that mafia now. I am a Muslim. No one can harm you. Police in your pocket. Then I ask you, justice is required? Yes. If someone robs you, no one can rob you. Agree? But don't you feel there should be justice? There are many robbers. There are many evils. There are many criminals who go scot free. Unless there is life after death, you cannot prove robbing is bad. You cannot prove raping is bad. Unless there is life after death, no humanity, no book on humanity. No Mother Teresa, no Mahatma Gandhi can prove robbing is bad without the concept of life after death. Because I'm asking you a question: Hitler, history tells us Hitler incinerated six million Jews. How many Jews? Six million. Six million. Suppose the law catches Hitler. What punishment can you give Hitler so that you can compensate for he has burnt six million Jews alive? Can you give him any punishment, brother? We have it, to put him in jail till his life death. Okay, will it be equivalent to burning six million Jews? Is burning better or putting in jail better? It's burning is of, of course. course. So maximum you can do is burn him alive, but that will be equal to one out of six million. What about the remaining five million, nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine people? What about that? What justice is your Lord going to do? But the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number four. Verse number fifty-six. As to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. If Hitler killed six million Jews, Allah says He can put him into hellfire and give him fresh skin again six million times. Allah can burn him, not here in the year after in the hell. So only way I can prevent Hitler from killing six million Jews is tell him that here you kill six million Jews, Allah will burn you twelve million times in the year after. You can't give him that thing here. What you realize without the concept of hell and heaven, you cannot prove robbing is bad. You cannot prove raping is bad. That's the reason our Creator, Almighty God, who has created the human beings, He tells us what is good, what is bad for us, and He tells us the rules and regulations. This is called as religion. So first, you have to find out which book is the authentic book which has been revealed by this Almighty God. And when you do research, you will come to it. That is the Quran. 
All the scriptures speak about Almighty God and all the scriptures they point out to the last and final revelation in the Quran and last and final message of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question. Thanks. Very interesting uh, way that that video went um, scientifically um, proving. <laughs> I thought when he said scientifically proving uh, that he was going to go through some sort of um, specific formula. I don't know, like, or just do some kind of like um, research or test or something. And then, and therefore, hell exists, therefore, heaven exists. But his approach in this video was more so uh, going from a moral perspective. It's like, who says something is right or something is wrong? And why is something bad for me as a person or you as a person, for any of us? Who gave that standard? Where did that come from? Did, do we just make it up? Like, sure, I guess human beings, we can make up laws and put rules and regulations to help govern society and everything. But ultimately, between our relationship to ourselves and relationship to other people on a moral level, what is right? What is wrong? What is good? What is bad? Dr. Sikhar Nayak says, well, the person that created um, the expert <laughs> would know. And that expert is God. Whatever you say, superpower or the power, whatever. He says, okay, God, English term, power, English term, whatever. It doesn't matter. That creator <laughs> is the expert here. And if you're doing something bad, somebody who lives a life and they may die rich and wealthy and surrounded by friends and family but if they spend their life doing bad things how can they pay for what they did and dr zakir naik says well if you don't have the concept of life after death and heaven and hell there is no punishment i guess it's just as human beings we we want there to be justice like what you reap you will sow you know um what goes around comes around and if it doesn't happen in this life which in many cases it, it doesn't there's no equal punishment that happens to people or equal reward those who you know work so hard giving to to charities helping people develop their minds and their bodies curing diseases and everything and they may make i don't know just a basic wage basic income or maybe people laugh at them because they say well i don't know your methods i hate your methods but that person is still doing such good work and benefiting so many people how does that person get rewarded dr zakir Knight, he never touched on the concept of heaven i think he most so focused on the concept of hell but i guess you can just do the flip of it how does somebody get an equal reward so if I help a million people, how do I get the reward of helping a million people if it doesn't happen in this life? Life after death, heaven, that's the reward. So interesting way of, um, of looking at it and presenting. I really liked how he kept the conversation very concise and focused. I think that's really, really, really um, important to stay on topic because he could have went on a different tangent, but I think the, what made his point so uh, impactful was that he made sure that it stayed on focus. So that's what I really liked about this video. It's very clear, concise, easy to follow. In a way, it still leaves an opening to sort of stretch the concept of heaven and hell because there's still so many different beliefs about heaven or hell, whether heaven or hell is an actual um, place or whether life after death is something that 100% exists in the way we think of life after death. It may not look the way most people think or, or not. Or maybe actually your punishment happens in the current life and you may not even be aware that somebody is being punished. Like he said, the mafia, for example, the mafia man could look like they're happy and although they have the money could be suffering on the inside. We don't know where necessarily that punishment would come from. So there has, there's still some holds there for a different perspective to be seen and looked at. But all in all, I think he did a good job in, in laying out his point. I think there's more that can be said about it though.